Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garapi. In the previous video, we talked about what is Webpack and why it's useful. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Webpack without writing a single line of configuration. Let's get started. I've got some starter code here, and it is a GitHub repository that I'll link in the description below. But basically, this is just a very simple website that imports a JavaScript file here, index.js. This file, index.js, imports a function, say hey, from hey.js and runs it. And this function, all it does, it says, hey world. So let's run this using a command called serve that I've installed. And we'll show you what it does. So this is it. It logs out hey world to the console. Now let's inspect the network tab. You'll notice that it makes two separate network requests, one for index.js and then one for its dependency, hey.js. This took four milliseconds and two milliseconds because they're on my machine. However, in the real world, this might take 300 or 400 milliseconds to fetch a JavaScript file. So let's see how Webpack can help us here. In order to use Webpack, we're going to have to use NPM to install some dependencies. So first, let's initialize NPM. This will create a package.json for us. And now we can go ahead and install our dependencies. When we install Webpack, it's a build tool. So these are going to be installed as development dependencies. We're going to install Webpack, Webpack CLI to drive the commands, and Webpack dev server to host our locally built files. Now, Webpack is a bundler. It operates on this paradigm of source files that are bundled into a distribution. So let's make a folder called source and move all of our JavaScript files over into this folder. Now what's cool about Webpack is that by default, it assumes that every file that's imported is a JavaScript file until you tell it otherwise. So we can actually remove the .js extension off of hey, and Webpack will treat it as a JavaScript file right out of the box. So we're all set up with Webpack. We've got the three dependencies installed. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. We're gonna run npn npx Webpack. And this is going to start at index.js by default, look for any dependencies and bundle them all together. So let's check out this dist directory. Webpack transformed index.js and hey.js into main.js. And this might look like a bunch of gobbledygook, but this is essentially those two files combined together. So let's head on over to our index.html and instead of pulling in index.js, let's use main.js from the distribution folder. And now let's go back and use Webpack to build and serve our files locally. So here we go, it's building and then it's going to start a local server hosting them. So here it is at port 8080, and you'll see that the program still works. It logs out Hey World to the console. But if we check the network tab, instead of making two separate network requests for your JavaScript, it's now only making one, one network request instead of two. Now, in the real world, when these are 300 or 400 or 500 millisecond long requests, this savings is going to be really great, especially if you're trying to uh, bundle up or use a lot of different scripts in one website. So that's it. We have used Webpack, bundled our JavaScript together, and served it locally on our machine without any configuration. In the next videos, we're going to be introducing a configuration, and I'll show you all the different sections of it and how we can use it to benefit. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.